It's time for Children's Chapel. Hi there. This is Gene Larson, your chapel friend, and I'd like to invite you to come with me now inside the open doors of Children's Chapel. We need these few minutes as we draw aside from the rush and noise of our daily lives, a time when we can be in the presence of God and listen as He speaks to us, a time when we can tell God about our love for Him. We'll start our worship by joining the chapel choir as they lead us in the singing of hymn number four, Holy, Holy, Holy. That's number four in your chapel songbook. And let's sing verses one and two. Time now for another Bible story from the life of Jesus. Today our story is from the 17th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. You might want to read this chapter after the program is over. Did you ever hear your parents or some other adults talk about taxes? Oh, sometimes they, they grumble about these taxes, but they pay them, don't they? Well, there's nothing new about the nuisance of paying taxes. Even Jesus had to face this problem, and it was rather interesting the way he faced it. As our story begins, the disciples John and Peter meet, and Peter seems a bit upset. Listen. There you are, Peter. I've been waiting for you. The master and the other disciples have gone ahead. We can join them at our house. Why, Peter, you look troubled. What's the matter? You saw that man who came up to me as we entered the village here? Yes. Who was he? He was a tax collector. Is that so bad? You have talked to tax collectors before. Of course I have, John. And I know that this man has the job of collecting the half-shekel tax from every person. Well, did you pay him? He didn't ask me to pay him. If he'd been interested in me alone, I would not have minded so much. Peter, I... I don't understand. What did he want then? He asked me if the master pays the tax. You mean he wanted to know if he could collect the tax money from Jesus? What did you tell him? That's just it. I told him yes. Now I fear I may have said the wrong thing. You could have told him that you just didn't know. Then he would have bothered Jesus himself about it. We should be able to take care of these things for the master. Do you think that... Perhaps Jesus is against paying the half-shekel tax? He might be against it, or he might be for it. I'll have to find out. I'll have to ask Jesus. Don't worry, Peter. He always has answers for all of our problems. You may be sure that he won't mind your asking him about this. Come, let's go to the house and see him about it right away. Now explain everything to Jesus. Simon. He's calling you. Yes, Lord. You come with me, John. All right, I'm with you. Simon, what do you think? 
From whom do the kings of the earth take toll or tribute? Master, you knew. I didn't even have to tell you. You knew I came to ask you about the tax. But instead, you ask me. From whom do the kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their own children or from others? Well, uh, the kings, uh, they collect taxes from... Uh, from, well, not from their own family. They, they collect taxes from others, from strangers. Then the sons are free. Yes. Yes, I, I think I see what you mean. You mean that you don't need to pay this tax. Is that right, Master? We will not offend the kings of the earth. Go to the sea and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. And did you do as Jesus said? Yes, John, and the miracle happened. I went down to the shore of Galilee and found my old boat there. I went out just a little ways from shore I put the hook down into the water, and immediately a fish was on the line. John, I didn't wait at all. It was almost as if the fish had been expecting me. That's amazing. Oh, that could happen to any person, of course. But what followed did not just happen. John, it was exactly as the master had told me. I opened the mouth of the fish, and there was the coin. Yes, a shekel was in the fish's mouth. And you used it for the tax money? Yes, I ran. I was so excited, and I found this tax collector. He was certainly surprised that I was so eager to pay him the money. I explained that one half of the coin was the tax money from Jesus of Nazareth, and the other half of the shekel was my money. Peter, you were worried about the answer you gave the tax collector when he first asked you if Jesus would pay the tax, remember? Yes, John. You know, I'm beginning to see that there isn't a, a yes or a no to every question, Jesus didn't tell me in so many words whether he thought he needed to pay the tax or not. And yet, he answered my question in a much better way. Yes. And he knows what we need even without our telling him. He will do our best for us. And if he wishes, he can even cause a miracle to happen. Yes, even before we tell him, Jesus knows our needs. And he wants us to have what is necessary in our lives. Isn't that wonderful? That Jesus looks upon you, John or Karen or Paul, or whatever your name happens to be, and he cares enough for you to see that your needs are supplied. What a treasure the love of Jesus is. I can't think what life would be without him, can you? and it makes me want to sing the praises of my Savior. How about you? I've asked that the chapel choir lead us in a special hymn of praise and adoration at this time. Turn in your chapel songbook and let's all sing with all our hearts, Jesus' Priceless Treasure.
prayer time again in the chapel. And today, let's not burden the Lord with a lot of things that we need. Remember, He knows about those things. Rather, let's make our prayer one of praise and adoration. And now, with heads bowed, eyes closed, and hands folded, we approach the throne of God. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, how wonderfully you have shown us your love and mercy. Not that we have earned it or deserve it in any way. No, for we have been far from what you expect us to be. But simply because you love us, our lives have been blessed with thy goodness. We thank and praise your holy name for the countless ways in which you have protected us from harm and evil. O Lord, Keep us close. Let the vision of your face never grow dim in our minds, that we forget not that we are children of yours, that you created us, that you are the Lord of our life. All we are and have, O loving Father, we give to you, asking that all we do and say and think may give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. As the doors of Children's Chapel close, we wish to thank you for worshiping with us. Children's Chapel is produced by Al M. Salzer for the National Lutheran Council, Department of Radio and Television. This is your host, Gene Larson, saying goodbye and God bless you until we meet again in Children's Chapel.